Hello, everyone. Welcome to the SACS first webinar. Uh, we're going to wait a few more minutes and just let people keep joining before we get started. But thank you all for joining us today. So before we dive into this very exciting webinar, creating a better security awareness program, I just have a few uh, housekeeping items. First, just to let everyone know we are recording this and it will be available on YouTube in the next day or so for anyone who missed it or who wants to review the material. Second, there will be time for Q&A at the end, so you can either save your questions throughout and let us know at the end by typing them into the Q&A box, or you can type them throughout the presentation and our awesome director of marketing will be collecting them and will read us the questions at the end of the presentation. And finally, this is our very first webinar, but we wanna do many more in the future. So please be sure to send us your feedback and ideas for future topics that you wanna learn about. And so without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started with creating a better security awareness program. So we are the security awareness company and awareness has been our passion for over 25 years. We were founded in 1991 by Wynn Schwartow and since then we've helped thousands of companies around the world create compelling and effective awareness programs. And just to prove that we've been around that long, on the left you can see a screenshot from our website from 2003 and on the right a screenshot of our current website. So as you can see we've been around the block and we've been here and experienced lots so we, we know what we're talking about. Our philosophy is simple. We believe that awareness is not a once a year burden, but rather a mindset or a lifestyle that can lead to behavior change. If you treat awareness more like a marketing program where you regularly and frequently reinforce your message, you'll be able to instill a sense of responsibility within your users to actually build that security forward culture that you need. And so we're gonna show you how to do that. We also are strong believers in flexibility, adaptability, creativity, and simplicity, which is why we've created a brand new program for licensing content here at SAC that we're excited to share with you today. My name is Ashley Schwartow, and I'm COO of the Security Awareness Company. I've been working here for what feels like my entire life, but in reality, it's probably about 16 years since I was a teenager. I grew up in the information security world and have been living a security awareness for a very long time. So I've witnessed thousands of awareness programs over the years, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm gonna share with you some things that I've learned over the years that will hopefully put your awareness program in the good category. And now I'm gonna let my coworker, Stacy, introduce herself. Hi, I'm Stacey Lee Messon, Client Program Manager here at SAC. I have about 15 years of program management experience. I've, while I've only been with SAC for a year, I, it's been a wonderful year so far, and I've enjoyed working with our client base. I am your point person, and the liaison between you and your, the production department. You ask for it, I'll make it happen. Let's get started. So we are, in terms of what we'll be talking about today, we are going to talk about FlexPoints, our new program. We want to define it for you, talk about its benefits, which in turn will explain why we made this change. And then we'll give you some examples of how you can use FlexPoints and uh, to make your security awareness program even better than it already is. We'll also discuss what's needed to manage a successful security awareness program and how the features of FlexPoints can help you with your program. And of course, we'll end with a Q&A session as well. As Ashley mentioned before, you think flex points, think flexibility, adaptability, creativity, and simplicity. These are words you'll hear again and with a little bit more detail closer to the end of our program. So what on earth are flex points? Well, it's SAC's new licensing system which allows you to gain access to our content just in a different way. Instead of the current licensing model where the type and number of products or packages are chosen upfront, for example, 12 newsletters, 12 videos, et cetera, 
and pricing is based on the type and number of content selected, among other factors. Now with this new program, we're selling you flex points. Think of it like going to an arcade, like a Dave & Buster's, for example. Most people are familiar with arcades, even if you've not been in one, you've driven by one at some point. And in essence, it's just a similar process. You go into a Dave & Buster's, you purchase a certain number of tokens or credits, and each game or activity is different in point value. For each game or activity, whether it's racing, basketball, laser tag, each time you use points, it decrements from your total. Just like at the arcade, you have the flexibility to choose what game or activity you want to play. You may walk in with a plan, get to the game that you wanted, you waited all day to play, and the line's too long. Now you have a choice. You can either stand and wait, or you can switch things up and go start somewhere else in the arcade. In the same way, Flex Points allows you that flexibility, the ability to switch things up, devise a plan that helps you and best helps you maximize the points that you have. You no longer have to know exactly what specific content you'll need up front. Okay, so benefits of, what, what are the advantages here? Let's take a look at the benefits of FlexPoints. First advantage is that it is more cost effective. As you can see on the screen, for a branded client with 5,000 users, using a basic package of newsletters, videos, artwork, you see that equates to 60 flex points, And you have a savings of $895 in this example. Why do we feel the need to make this change then? Well, we listen to our clients' feedback, and some of the most common feedback is that organizations need to evolve. There may be changes in leadership, the company's strategy or roadmap may change, and also, more importantly, as we know, every company needs the ability to easily and quickly adapt to latest threats. We know all too well that there are new threats quite often, and it's in every company's best interest to have the ability to address those quickly. So we decided to do our part to make that easier for you to change things with as little hassle as possible. You don't always have to know what your program will need when you first execute that agreement with our sales team. You may have an idea, but you can't quite nail down the specifics. For example, you may know that you wanna do a monthly newsletter subscription, maybe one training module, and maybe you use some posters or videos, but you don't always know specifics up front. Or maybe you think you know, and six months down the road, you decide, you know, I'd rather have modules instead of videos, or upper management gets involved and decides that the security awareness program should go in a much different direction altogether based on a change in corporate culture, whatever is the need, FlexPoints entirely solves that problem for you. Because with FlexPoints, you can avoid the process of doing a new statement of work, getting a new invoice, a purchase order, just to be able to add to your package. We strongly recommend also that you reinforce your training material more frequently. This would be quarterly. You know, doing it once a year is just not, we found is just not enough, and that's across the board, regardless of the size of your company or the industry that you're in. You could do quarterly security awareness material, given posters, videos, screensavers, et cetera. You may even utilize sections of the newsletter in email, internal email campaigns. Users forget or they zone out if it's the same material presented in the same way once per year. Who doesn't get tired of that same harassment training or code of conduct training every year and six months later, do we really remember what we were taught? I know I don't. It's important that we remind our users that good security awareness practices are important all the time, not just once a year. So by doing, one way to do that is to repeatedly present them with key messages in various eye-catching ways, whether utilizing marketing packs or emails or posters, and as Ashley mentioned earlier, security awareness is it's like marketing. You know, Nike didn't tell us just once, just do it. They tell us over and over, and there's a reason for that. Security awareness is no different in the need to remind users about good practices. Here are some ideas. Place little pop-up tent signs on tables in your break room. Place signs on the walls in your break rooms, in your conference room, uh, in your elevators, or in the inside door of restroom stalls where you definitely have a captive audience. Let us know if you need our help. Deciding how to go about creating or strengthening your security awareness program because we live and breathe security awareness here at SAC. Why not pick our brains? We have experts on staff. We're happy to help. 
You may find the annual planning calendar helpful. It gives you ideas of recommended content based on the newsletter topic for the month for the entire following year. Do you need a newsletter subscription to utilize that calendar? Not at all. For example, if the newsletter for June is on malware, then we suggest training modules, videos, reinforcements in terms of posters or security one sheets on that particular subject. So tap into the resources that you have available. There is no additional cost to you whatsoever. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about the advantages of FlexPoint and why we should make the change, let's see what these packages actually look like. First, we have the bite size. We have the keeping it simple, the starter, plus, sweet spot, the mega, giga, terra, colossus, and galaxy. That's what the packages look like. But what does that really mean to, as you're sitting here on this call, what does that really mean to me in terms of the content that I need and I actually use today when it comes to FlexPoint? Well, here's what the one year newsletter subscription. That's a 12 point value. Uh, it's six points per module or trivia game or pre or post assessment module. In terms of screensavers, squirm videos, or launch video, they're four points. The regular videos, Security Express or ISA, are three. Email marketing templates are two. And any artwork, whether it's posters, marketing pack, or security one sheets, that's value one point. In terms of point values, think about the types of content you may want to use and the amount of content you may want to release throughout the year to be able to gauge the number of flex points that will work for your particular organization. For example, if you have a mature security awareness program in place, then you may want to find yourself drawn to larger packages. But if you're, not, if you're just starting out and you need a simple program before ramping up your efforts, you may consider one of the small or mid-sized packages. If you already have a very strong in-house effort, then maybe you really just need a supplemental package and nothing more. And if you're unsure, we believe that the sweet spot package, which that's why it's highlighted on the screen, provides the right amount of points and flexibility for many, not all, but many organizations. So now you're probably thinking, this is all great, sounds wonderful, but I still don't know how this affects me and how I could use it. So let's take a look at a sampling of ways to use FlexPoint. The bite size. This is our smallest package, only 12 points. But it's one that still allows you choices. You may simply do a newsletter subscription or just license posters, digital signage, or security one sheet. Or if you're a small organization, now you have the ability, even with these few points, to expose your users to a variety of training, reinforcement, and messaging material as well. Our next example is using the basic package, which has 36 flex points. And as you can see, you have even more choices here in how you can use your flex points, but you still have the ability to create a successful security awareness program. Whatever it is, and you know best what's gonna resonate with your, in your, within your corporate culture. And this package, we think, gives you some adequate choices to do so. And next to this sweet spot, which I mentioned earlier. This is where we believe many companies will find comfort. There are a lot of possibilities in how you may use these 72 flex points with training, reinforcement, and messaging materials. You can switch it up as you go. And as you learn what's been successful, what's not gonna work within your organization, and, and once you launch, I mean, you can launch and again, you launch with one thing, a video, a training module, and if it doesn't work well, you have much more flexibility here in finding what's going to work better. And again, lots of choices across the board of what we have to offer in terms of content. And finally, the Terra package. The Terra package is worth 150 points. And this is where you have even more flexibility to choose any of the content. Um, you may choose much more frequent training if you'd like. Um, but you still have the freedom to reinforce that, and that's what's nice with packages, the larger packages, because you can still stay strong in terms of training, but you have so much more in terms of reinforcement and messaging material to choose from. So now you've got, you've learned a little bit more about FlexPoint, and you have your FlexPoint. So let's see, you've chosen a package, you've completed the sales process, what's next? Security awareness planning training. 
Ashley's now going to talk to you about the strategy behind running a successful security awareness program. Thank you, Stacy. So as she said, I'm going to talk about the strategy, some high level concepts that you can use to apply to your awareness program and your, and to get your security awareness program really engaged and to get people excited about it as excited as the people in this picture. So the very first thing I want to talk about is the 70, 20, 10 model for learning and development. If you go to our website or read our blog, you'll see this mentioned all over the place because while we do focus on security awareness training, we also believe in educating in order to empower users. So we like to use this model um, as the basis for creating all of our content. So what this model says is that most of what humans learn and most of what you know in your brain doesn't come from formal training opportunities like sitting in a classroom or attending a webinar like this or going to a conference or taking an LMS course. Most of what you know comes from experience and informal social learning. You learn what to do by doing it, right? So when you're trying to figure out how to make Excel spreadsheets work, you're, you don't learn it by taking a course and then like six months later applying it, you learn it by doing it. Um, experiential learning can be anything that's on the job or in the workflow. Informal learning is anything like where you ask someone for help or you watch a tutorial to figure out how to fix the toilet or you read an article or maybe you watch a quick YouTube video. It's something where it's not a, an official, like I'm not sitting down specifically to learn like in a classroom. It's just, it's informal. And then 10% of what we learn comes from that structured learning such as like instructor-led training days and LMS courses. So my question is, why is it that most organizations spend most of their efforts, time, and money on the type of training that has the least impact? Our goal is to help you create and find content to use across the entire learning spectrum. So in order to not get stuck in the 10%, you have to think beyond just your traditional CBTs, LMS courses. Well, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to tell you. So the very first thing is we're going to talk about the dreaded CCC triad. Now here at SAC, we're really big fans of triads, which if you've gone to our website or have ever taken any of our training materials, you're very familiar with. Uh, we, we focus on the foundations and the triads such as the CIA triad, you know, the foundation of information security, the domains triad, the many lives triad. Uh, on our resource library, we have the plan, launch, manage triad. So we're, we're really into triads. Well, this is a triad that we want you to avoid. Courses, completion, and compliance. If you focus on this, like too many organizations do, then all of your users are gonna make that face. And I don't think that's the face that you want when your users think about your awesome security awareness program. So in order to avoid that face, I need you to think beyond courses. Think beyond what are we doing for this year's awareness course? Because security awareness is like marketing, you really need to think about it in terms of continuous learning, putting learning opportunities in the workflow and approaching awareness as a soft skill that you constantly reinforce and regularly, frequently reinforce it throughout the year. When approaching topics that you want to teach your users, whether it's you know best password practices or how to spot a phishing attack or how to follow your policy, your policy rules, uh, think beyond putting those things in a course because maybe a topic works better as a short video or as an article or as a series of short articles that you send out in email blasts. Maybe a topic is much more appropriate for an in-person group discussion where people can ask you questions. So not everything has to be done in a sit-down, click-through e-learning module. Think beyond the traditional courses if you want to drive engagement and actually teach people things. On that note, you also need to think beyond completion. I totally get that it's important to know who is completing what and when, because that is an important metric that you need to be aware of. But just because someone completes something does not mean that it made any impact on them. I mean, how many of us completed pre-calculus? Do you remember any of it? I can, I can tell you that I don't. I barely remember a book I completed three months ago. So. If I completed a course in an LMS, you know, at the beginning of my, my job, am I supposed to remember everything that they told me one time? If you expect behavior or cultural change to happen because you got 100% completion from your users, 
that's, that's absurd. You have to measure other things. You have to measure game and quiz scores. They completed it, but how well did they complete it? Uh, you need to measure participation and feedback. They completed it, but did they hate their lives while they were completing it? Or did they actually learn something? It's a good idea to put out user surveys at the end of a course or at the end of a quarter or you know, every month even. What is it that your users want to learn more about? Where do they feel like their awareness skills need improvement? You need to measure engagement. So who's doing how much, who's into it. And you also need to think about your demographics when you are measuring these things. If more young people are checking out like the short videos, but maybe not the longer trainings, and maybe your older population's more into the articles instead of the games, then that shows you that you need to mix up your content delivery modalities a bit. You know, get creative. Think about engagement and an education rather than just completion of courses. And finally, you have to think beyond compliance. Yes, fulfilling the training portion of compliance requirements is very important, especially when we have GDPR coming out and that's gonna affect organizations all over the world. But did you know that none of the US compliance standards, including HIPAA, PCI, FERC, NERC, and GDPR for that matter, none of them, well, all of them include requirements for security awareness training, but none of them include any sort of guideline as to what kind of training has to be deployed. There are no guidelines about length, type, style, interactivity, frequency, regularity, nothing. All they, they require is proof that training was completed. But like I said earlier, just because someone completes training doesn't mean it had any impact on them. So in theory, you could take some PowerPoint you throw together really fast, scormify it, throw it up in your LMS, Tell everyone, hey guys, go click through this, print out a report that shows 100% completion, and the auditors will say, okay, you're good to go. But did you have an impact on your user population? Did you teach anyone anything? Will, they act, will your users actually change their behavior based on that approach? If you approach awareness from a compliance-only standpoint, then you're showing your users that security is not important to you, and that it's just like this annoying checkbox thing. And if it's not important to you, then why should it be important to them? So if you want to get buy-in and more compliance out of your users, then think beyond compliance. Think beyond the CCC triad. So then you say, well, what should I think about? Well, think about performance support and workflow learning. Now, before I tell you exactly what that is, I need to introduce you to the concept of the five moments of need. These are the five moments that we as human beings need to access information. The first time, the first need, the first moment of need, excuse me, is the for the first time. The first time you're encountering information. You know, what is an APT? I've never heard that word before. Now I'm learning it. The second moment of need is when you want or need to learn more about something. Okay, I now know the definition of an APT. What does it actually mean? Go a little deeper. The third moment is when you're trying to apply knowledge or remember something. You know, when you're trying to remember how to create those formulas your coworker just showed you how to do. Fourth moment is when something goes wrong. Like, oh no, I think I clicked on a phishing email. What am I supposed to do? Who do I call? Uh. And the fifth moment is when something changes. Whether it's an unexpected change or a planned change, you still have to access information. So traditional training, the 10% mentioned earlier, the formal structured learning, such as this webinar, uh, addresses the first two moments in need really well. Because those are the, the moments where you're, you're laying the foundation for education. You're, you're telling someone about something new and giving them a really strong formal basis. But the other three moments in need are much better handled by informal and experiential learning because they all happen in the workflow. These are the things that all of us face every single day. When we're checking our email and trying to get our work done and going about our day, whether we're at work or at home, these are the, the moments of need we face the most often, yet these are the moments that training totally forgets. Because traditional training, works like this. We're going to tell you what we're going to tell you. Then we're going to get into the concepts about it, maybe give you some real world examples, some case, some case studies, some scenarios. Now we're going to dig a little deeper into some of those. And then finally, we end with some action items and some steps that you can take to prevent whatever it is that we're trying to teach you to prevent or steps to help you do whatever it is we're trying to teach you how to do. And then whether it's hours, days, weeks, or months later, that is when you actually need that information. So for example, if you, you have required fishing training, for example, everyone takes their fishing training, but then you don't fish your users 
with a phishing campaign until like two months later, their moment of need is way after the fact. And they've probably already forgotten most of what you taught them if you haven't done any reinforcement because people tend to lose 79% of new information within three days. So while this style of training is really great for foundational, it doesn't truly address when we need information. Performance support and workflow learning, which is where you can provide information to your users when they actually need it at the moment of need, addresses this problem. So at the moment of need, oh, I think, I've, I, think I have a phishing email. I, I don't know what I should do. Oh, but I remember that my manager told me I could go look up this document that tells me this, the signs of a phishing email. So that document will show me the steps of what I should do. I check the steps, I verify it's a phishing email, I delete it, I feel really good. But now I kinda wanna learn a little more just in case I see another email. So now I'm gonna dig a little deeper and I find another video or something that I could learn more about. So if you provide resources to your users that they can access when they need it, it could naturally lead them to looking for more information and learning more on their own, on their own time and at the moment of need rather than doing just in case training. Now, this is not an either or situation. The traditional training, which handles the first two moments of need and the performance support, which handles the most common moments of need, they supplement one another. You can't do one or the other. You have to do both if you want to truly educate and empower your users. Well, how do I do that, Ashley? I'm gonna tell you. So performance support and workflow learning can be done through lots of reinforcement and marketing style messaging. Uh, if you can integrate things into the workflow so that it's naturally accessible and doesn't interrupt or take away from what people are already doing. Often training is like, hey, you have two weeks, you have to go do this, you need to go to the LMS, log in here, click all this, do this, stop working, and it takes a lot of time. But what if you just sent your users like a weekly tip of the week, you know? How to spot a phishing email. And it's just in my inbox with all the other stuff I'm already looking at. I'm gonna see it, I'm like, okay, great, and I delete it, but I read it and I processed it and my brain is storing that information. And then maybe tomorrow when I get a suspicious email in my inbox, I'll remember, hey, I just saw something about this, you know? So you're aiming to create just-in-time learning opportunities and you have to think like a marketer, like what Stacy was saying. And the ways that you can do this, you can, create a, you can create a resource library that is easily accessible and discoverable. Think about when you, are stuck and you don't know how to do something, what's your first instinct? You go to Google and you look it up. So you wanna create something similar for, that's related to security policies. Where can your users quickly and easily access the information they need that relates to the rules in your security policies? Is it easy for them to report incidents? Is it easy for them to ask questions? Is it easy to them, for them to call the help desk when they're not sure about someone in the lobby or about a phishing email or if they think they lost their badge? or you know, lost their laptop, something. And then when you're thinking like a marketer, you know, put posters everywhere, put your messaging everywhere. Like Stacy said, put it in the bathroom. You, know, you go to restaurants these days and the backs of bathroom stalls is covered in advertisements. So cover yours in, in security advertisements. Uh, use screensavers and digital signage on lobby monitors. You know, just really put your message out there because even if people don't stop and stand and like read it word for word, it's kind of like subliminal messaging. You know, you see, you see enough commercials for that Coke. Even if you don't drink soda, you're going to kind of want a Coke at the end of the day. So it's hard to just do all of this at once, right? So you got to plan for it. And for any of my Parks and Recs fans out there, I call this the Leslie Nope stage of an awareness program. Leslie Nope is a super planner. She color codes, she has binders, she has whiteboards for everything. So put on your Leslie Nope hat and let's get planning. Uh, because a successful awareness program won't work if you wing it. Uh, I've seen way too many organizations over the years just, pardon my French, but half-ass their programs. And then they wonder why they didn't get any results. It's because they didn't plan. Planning is the most important stage of any successful awareness program and often the most overlooked. You have to assess your needs. You know, every organization has different risks and different needs. You have to examine your management and culture because what, what works at a small, you know, 50 person firm isn't necessarily going to work at a global 50,000 person organization. You need to set realistic goals. You know, you're never going to reach 100% security. So don't aim for it. Aim for something more realistic and attainable. 
determine a budget, and then actually create a game plan. Uh, like Stacy mentioned earlier, create a content calendar. It's really helpful to know, to see a big picture of what you're aiming to do throughout the year. And even if you have to make changes, at least you have a plan. But without a plan, your program will probably fail. Now, having said that, you need to be willing to change and evolve your plan if you need to. It's kind of like taking a road trip. You don't just start driving without knowing how or when you get somewhere, right? You have a route in mind. You know, hey, I'm going to get there probably around 6 o'clock. But you also know you're probably going to have to stop for gas. You might need to stop for lunch. And if you see, you know, a sign for the world's largest frying pan or whatever, you're probably going to want to stop and take a picture. So you have to allow yourself a little bit of flexibility. Or what happens if you get a flat tire, if something goes wrong? So build a plan, but don't build it so tightly knit that you can't squeeze other necessities into it. Metrics. Do you have them? What's your plan for metrics? What are you measuring? You can't manage or change what you don't measure. So you need to employ metrics that you can, you can gather and collect so that you can see if you're hitting the mark or if you're not and where you need to make improvements. And then once you've gathered the metrics, see if you need to change something, tweak the system, wait, and then reassess. Gather the metrics again, tweak the system, and then reassess. And do this like marketers do over and over and over again because you know it's not a once and done kind of thing. If something worked five years ago, it's probably not necessarily gonna work today. So what kind of metrics do you need to look at? Well, there are two types. There are deployment and impact. So deployment metrics are things like how many people are participating in my program? Are people completing the training? Are people logging into the system? When are they logging into the system? Is anyone even talking about this? If you have a socialized collaborative learning platform instead of like a traditional LMS, you can gather a lot of those metrics in there seeing, you know, where people are engaging the most. Are they liking each other's activity? Are they commenting? And then impact metrics are probably the most important because this is where you can assess the impact the program is having on your organization. It's also probably the hardest thing to track because you have to set your goals and then probably manually track some things. So what's the number of phishing emails that are being clicked? What's the number of help desk calls to reset their passwords? Is there a positive discussion around the water cooler? Are people less resistant to policy changes? Are people remembering their badges more often? So decide what impact metrics are most important to your organization. Don't try to do too many, just pick a few and start there. And like I said, gather information, tweak the system, reassess your needs, and do it in a cycle. But also, don't try to do too much at once. Not only will you kill yourself trying to, to launch this massive awareness effort, but you'll also probably burn out the people that you're trying to reach. So ramp up slowly. Integrate security education into your culture and make it part of the routine. Make it part of their workflow. You know, don't just take buy a bunch of content and then throw it on your LMS and expect people to be into it. You know, you gotta, you gotta kick it off with a kickoff event, maybe have a party, get your CISO involved, have them write a letter, do a launch video, get people talking about it, and then start doling out the material, a little bit here, a little bit there, not too much at once, and don't throw too much of the same kind of learning into one part of the year. You know, don't say, hey, you have two weeks and you have to do all five of these modules, and then don't do any more modules the rest of the year. First of all, you're going to interrupt everybody's workflow. You're going to annoy everyone. People are going to be frustrated when they sit down to take the training. If you're frustrated, your brain is not processing information. And then the next year when you do it again, people are going to be dreading it and be resistant to it. You don't want people to be resistant. So don't overload one part of the year with too much of one thing. You know, maybe, maybe do a module every quarter and maybe do a monthly newsletter and maybe like a weekly tip of the week email from the CISO things that'll help people at home with their security awareness. So, so mix up the different types of learning and spread them out throughout the year because you have a diverse population of people at your organization, so you need to offer diverse learning opportunities. And on that note, you need to remember that not everyone is going to participate in every single activity. So what resonates with one group of users might not resonate with another group of users. 
Some people like to read. Some people like to listen to podcasts. Others really prefer just talking to someone to learn. So offer lots of different modalities for your content and lots of opportunities for people to find the information they need when they need it. So now that I've given you some high-level strategy behind running a security awareness program, Stacy's going to close explaining how flex points can help you meet those goals. Thank you, Ashley. That's a lot of great information. So as Ashley said, we've explained. So we started out by explaining what flex points are, and it's our new way of licensing SAT content, but using credits versus picking your, your package in each item in your package right up front. Um, the different types of packages, uh, flex point packages that will exist now, and the points that are associated with the content that you are already familiar with. We discussed how to plan a successful security awareness program using that 70-20-10 model. And now let's talk briefly about how, what the, how the advantages of, flex, of the flex point system can help you apply that learning model to your organization. With flex points, we, you have flexibility which is the freedom to choose from our entire content library at any time that you so choose. You can, choose, you can use training material, reinforcement material, or messaging. To, you're no longer gonna be stuck with any spe a specific type of content. With FlexPoints, you also now have adaptability. In the past, if you licensed content, let's say 12 videos, for example, and you launched one, and it didn't resonate very well with your users, you were pretty much stuck with 11 videos that you weren't really going to use anymore. We know that organizations change. We know that um, company strategies, company roadmaps change, um, and just the corporate culture itself. Well, so should your security awareness program, and now you can do so very easily. Creativity. Mix and match to discover what works best for your corporate culture. In the past, you couldn't just try one video. Like I said before, you had to license a set number that you thought you were gonna need. You couldn't then swap that out once you realized that type of content didn't work well for your organization. With FlexPoint, you can learn from that first launch, that one video or that one module, and utilize different types of content going forward rather than be stuck with unusable content. Familiarity. This is not a foreign concept this credit base, credit system of using credits. The idea of purchasing credits, or flex points in this case, is not only similar to buying tokens or credits in our arcade, but, a sense, but if you're in marketing, you may actually be familiar with licensing graphics from a Shutterstock or iStock or Getty Images, where you buy, let's say, 200 credits, and each time you download an image, it deducts the value from your total. It's the same concept, so it's, not, it's nothing really new. And finally, simplicity. In the past, you had to keep track of the remaining number of courses, remaining number of videos or marketing packs, et cetera. I can't honestly tell you how often I get that question from clients who just simply lost track. Now, all you have to track is one number, your flex point. How much simpler can that really get? Guys, we appreciate your time, and now we'd like to open up to answer any questions you may have. Uh, this is Kaylin. Right questions? now it looks like there are no questions so far in the queue, but um, if you guys would like to... Oh, uh, Andrea has asked, how soon will flex points be introduced? Thank you, Andrea. I actually have a slide ready for you. <laughs> Stacy. Yes, so the flex points are available. They are actually available now. Um, you can either you can have two, cho two choices. You can choose not to switch at all and just stay with the current package as you have it licensed, or we can convert your current life, uh, content that you have into flex points, and then I'll give you that total and what you have remaining. If you've had content that's already been delivered, of course, that would be deducted before you get a total remaining flex point. But you have a choice at this point to switch over to that system and have them converted or just stay as is until the remainder of your license. Any other questions? I guess we answered everything. <laughs> but of course, if anyone does have questions, you can always email us or reach us through our website yes. or hit us up on Twitter or LinkedIn. We're here to answer your questions. And like I said, we'll be uh, posting this on YouTube. So if there's anyone in your organization who you think should watch part of this, they'll be, we'll be emailing out a link 
later. So thank you everyone for joining us. And we look forward to doing more of these webinars in the future. Thank you.